Okay, so maybe I don't have it. I can't see how to do that. Oh, yeah. No. Let me find it. Oh, yeah. Okay, got it. To everyone. That's it. Yeah. Okay, so welcome, Shibani. Um, so I've put recording on now, everybody. Um, I think we should start now rather than wait any, any longer. So just to say on behalf of uh, UTS and the HETA project, welcome to Agnes Sandor, of course. It's uh, fantastic to have her giving her time to preparing these resources for, for us. And many others are going to replay this and go through them after this afternoon, of course. So we'll hand over to Agnes, uh, who will explain what we're going to try and learn about this month. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Simon, and thank you for listening. And, and please uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to interrupt me at any moment, because you might have a very different... There are concepts in it that maybe you don't understand. So I'll go through slowly. We'll see how far we get today. And then, um, so please uh, make it as interactive as possible. Will so uh, I will. Hi, Shibani. <laughs> Hello. So I will uh, share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes? yes, great. Yes. So I'm trying to make a slideshow. Okay, yes. So before I begin, because this is the first proper course, the previous one, we didn't know that it would continue, what, what it uh, was going to be. So I just wrap up very rapidly what the goal of this course is. So it is the goal is for you to gain expertise in modifying the existing rhetorical analysis systems that have been implemented in AWA. As you know, as you might know, there are two um, systems now. Uh, at, at this point, we uh, analyze analytical texts and reflective. And the, in this course, I will go through the analytical part. Uh, but uh, if somebody is interested in the reflective one, that can change as well, and we can do both. So this is the proposed program of this course on the long term, which may, of course, be adapted to your needs. Uh, so first, the first part is theoretical and technical background. And I will try to be brief, but uh, it's important for you to understand it in order to be able to, uh, to manipulate the tools. And we have done the general description of the concept matching analysis framework last time. We did a very little bit of lexicon, but uh, we will go through it again. And uh, today, uh, the, the, the program is system architecture and tools, but I, I, I'm not sure we are going to finish it today. We'll see uh, this, the pace at which we can go. And then uh, walking through the existing, existing system, this is a good exercise for you to see how it is built, because it's important for you to know if you want to intervene or modify something, in, in which file you should go or at what point you should do it. And then the second part is practice, where we analyze the output and errors. Uh, we see what needs you have for modifying the tools, and there will be exercises, there will be exercises all along. And then uh, if somebody is interested in implementing uh, re rhetorical analysis for a new genre or, or a new domain, it, uh, it, it can be interesting to, to go into it and, uh, and start it together a little bit. So, so this is uh, the general goal. Then um, I, I just wrap up very, very rapidly what the what what the theoretical background to this analysis is so what what uh, the, the the method that we are going to go through is called concept matching you'll see why so this is an it, this is two things on the one hand it is an, an analysis framework so how to analyze how to get at the rhetorical meaning in a sentence and on the other side 
it is its implementation in an NLP tool. So it is an analysis framework for identifying what we have called rhetorically salient sentence types. So types of sentences, se sentences that convey types of rhetorical meaning that we will go through very rapidly again. And this identification is through patterns of concepts, which you will see again. So for example, here, this is a, 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 a relatively uh, simple type of a rhetorically salient sentence, which is called novelty. Why is it, wh what, is, what, 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 what are the parts of the sentence that convey uh, novelty is the words in, um, in, in, in red, new insights provide evidence or something suggests a new approach or results define a novel role. So how do we identify these parts of the sentences? It is through the concepts that the words in red um, instantiate in the sentences. And there are basically two kinds of concepts in, uh, in this uh, sentence type. One is new, I, I put, this is an easy example, a straightforward example, because new doesn't have a lot of, a lot of um, uh, words that instantiate new, like new and novel. And the other um, concept, which is more complicated, is called idea. Actually, idea, you will see, is, 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 a, is an umbrella term. There are different other concepts uh, below. And this is insights, provide evidence, suggest approach, results define role. So these are, these are words that are uh, related to some mental activity and some thinking and things like that. So uh, the, uh, the, the rhetorical expression of novelty in at analytical essays is conveyed by two concepts, new and idea, but this is not enough that you have new and idea in the sentence, but you also need to have relationships between them. And this is what makes this um, uh, new insights provide evidence, uh, coherent um, sentence uh, part. But this coherence is not, a co is, is, is not um, uh, related to any specific syntactic relationship between these words, because this, the kind of syntactic relationship can be any um, in, in the sentences. So the interesting thing is that you just take words and you take these words in syntactic relationships and this is the pattern in any syntactic relationship. Is this uh, clear for you? Yeah? Okay, you, you're, 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 <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I, I don't, don't activate your micros, I see that they are not, so please interrupt me at any point when it is not clear. So, um, so this is, this is the basis. And then, uh, how do we implement NLP systems that automatically these sentences? So there might be different ways of implementing it. The way I have been using is rule-based. That is, uh, I, I uh, write rules that, that uh, determine when these uh, rhetorically salient sentence types will be tagged. So how is this done? Uh, it, is, it, it, it is by mapping the concept patterns. So this is a pattern. New and idea in syntactic relationships is a pattern. And this is patterned into the, it, it, the linguistic realizations. So the relationships, the, the links between these concepts are mapped into syntactic dependencies. And in the actual system, in the, in the current system, uh, the syntactic dependencies are uh, detected by the Stanford parser. If uh, I, I think everybody knows what a parser is, Emily, I, I, I I, I, I hope, oh, I, I don't know if you know what a parser is, a syntactic parser. Uh, okay, so, so I assume that you know what, what it is. 
and um, uh, so the relationships are mapped into syntactic dependencies by the Stanford Parsa, and then the the concepts are mapped into lexical features and the patterns into co-occurrence rules by our tool, which is Athenor, which was, or Athenor, which was uh, developed by Claude Roux, uh, my colleague. So this is what we are going to go through now. Now, very quickly again, uh, so these here you see the rhetorically salient sentence types uh, that uh, have been uh, modeled until today in, in the analytical parser, which is summary, novelty, background, contrast, open question. So these are the, um, the types uh, that, that, that are present in, in, in AWA. And uh, so here are roughly the patterns. So in the, in the middle, there is the concept of idea because what is, what is uh, an analytical uh, uh, argumentative piece of writing? It is, an, um, it is a, um, a piece of writing where you want to speak about your ideas and you want to argue that your ideas are new that there have been ideas like this in the past, that there are contrasts among ideas, that there are, um, there are tendencies by group, uh, where the um, uh, importance of some ideas grows, which shows the importance of that idea. You want to argue that your idea is important, so you give importance to your ideas. You may be surprised by other ideas, meaning also that there is something new about it. And, and um, so this is, this, this is the, um, the, uh, the idea be behind this, uh, um, this system. Now, uh, the, uh, the concepts that you see here are, uh, are, 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 are the, the, the top level concepts because there are some subclasses which we will see later. So this was the, um, uh, the uh, introduction uh, and wrapping up what we have seen already. And um, now to, to, to summarize the task that we have by writing a concept matching grammar. So by concept matching grammar, I mean the system that we develop for identifying the rhetorically salient sentences uh, in texts. So what do we need for that practically? We need list of, lists of words that instantiate the constituent concepts in the rhetorical patterns. For example, we need to have lists of words for new and idea and all the other concepts. And we need co-occurrence rules that match the sentences where the con those sentences, where the constituent concepts are syntactically related. So, for example, if the Stanford parser, which, um, which detects the syntactic relationships uh, between the words, finds a sentence in which a word that instantiates new and a word that instantiates idea are syntactically related, then tag this sentence as novelty, like in, in the sentence, new insights provide evidence. So these are the two tasks that we need to carry out. And now we are going to see how the Stanford, so the, the basics of the Stanford parser and the basics of Ethner. So the outline of the course today is first we see the architecture of the concept matching system, which is rather straightforward. And then we'll go through the tools, the Stanford parser, what does it do? What, what, what is the output of the parser? And on Ethner, what is its output? Uh, how do we configure a grammar? And uh, we'll speak about the formalisms to use in the lexicons. The lexicons are where uh, we put the lists of words. Uh, that is that may instantiate the the constituent concepts 
and we'll go through the rule formalisms to write the uh, co-occurrence rules. So this is the, the program for today. Now, the architecture of the concept matching system, really straightforward. So the input is a text, is a, a, a simple text, a, a file, with, with the uh, extension text. Well, what I'm talking about is for development because in the Apple system, the formats are different. I'm talking of, of the system that we are going to use for the development of concept matching uh, uh, and, and the testing and, and seeing, uh, uh, analyzing individual sentences with the tools themselves, so not through uh, AWA. So the input text goes to the Stanford parser first, and the, the output of the Stanford parser is an XML file. I will show you this file. And then this XML file goes, so what does, so we, we, we uh, think about the Stanford parser as a pre-treatment. So it, 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 it uh, prepares the text for the concept matching analysis. So what does the Stanford parser do? So it, 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 it segments the text into sentences. You, uh, usually there are many sentences in a text. It is segmented into sentences, so you don't have to do this. It assigns part of speech tags. That is, it, it will say what is a noun, what is a verb, etc., cetera, to, to, the, to the words of the sentences, because it also, I, I didn't put everything that it does. It, it, it segments the sentences into words. And it also uh, um, gives the syntactic dependencies between the words. So this is what the uh, Stanford parser does. And then what Atenor does, it assigns the concept features to what we call the lemmas. Uh, we'll, we'll speak about it later. And it selects sentences with the instantiated concept patterns. And uh, so the output is called, the file type is co called output res result. And it, it, it contains the rhetorically salient sentence types, uh, the tags. It, it, uh, so the rhetorically salient sentence types are tagged. And we can also mark, which is not, I think it's not, um, it's not uh, implemented in, uh, in A1 now. Uh, it, it can mark the instantiated concept patterns. So that is, it can, it can highlight or it can put in bold or it, it can show what are the words which convey the rhetorical meaning. And I think it is a, a, an important feature. It, 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 uh, the academics liked this feature. And actually, <laughs> that's, something yeah. I think we, that's something we need to pick up again in the new version of the uh, the Acker Writer tool, because those words are not actually in bold at the moment. Yeah, well, I, it's very, very easy to do it because uh, we know which these words are, so they just have to be signaled. Okay. Uh, yes. Now, the Stanford parser, if you, if you, so you need to have a Stanford parser if you want to um, intervene in AWA. And here is the uh, URL for, for downloading the Stanford parser. I met where the version I use, I think there is a, a, a newer version, but I don't know the compatibility. Uh, I, so I, I think it's better to, if, if, if you want to do something to, um, to use this version, and uh, here is the command to run the parser. So this is just for you if you're interested in this. And then, uh, so uh, the, the examples that I, uh, which I will use to illustrate what's going on uh, is here. So here is a, here, here is a I, I created a file, which I called sentence text, and uh, which contains contains the three sentences that were uh, the, uh, the three novelty sentences. And uh, to show you what, um, 
so what the Stanford parser output looks like, I hope it will open. Uh, yes, so, so uh, the Stanford parser output looks like this. It is an XLM file, uh, XLM file, yes. XML, sorry, an XML file, but we are not going to go through this file, what, it, uh, what information it contains, because, um, uh, because it is very difficult to read. So, uh, Atenor transforms this form into its own format, and we are going to read the, the, the result of the Stanford parser through the Atenor format. And uh, the so here, if if you want to, I, I don't know if you want to work with Ava, if you want to do uh, any any uh, changes in it. But if you do, the first thing to do is also always to check the Stanford parser output before before touching the grammar, because this is the input for it, and you should be sure if the, the uh, if if the syntactic relationship that you want to uh, that is important, uh, relevant for you, if it does exist in the Stanford parser or not, or and what it looks like, and what are the features of it. We'll see, we'll see it again. So this is very important that the input for everything is the Stanford parser output. If this output is not uh, does not contain the information that you need, that sometimes you cannot do anything because we cannot intervene into the Stanford parser. This was different when we used XIP before there we could do anything, but here we cannot do anything, but we can do things. We can uh, add dependencies, we can do some things. It's, a, it's limited, but still there are things to do. But so this is the first thing. So now I said that we are not going to work with this XML file. We are not interested in it anymore. We will uh, transform it into the Atenor format. So in order to get Atenor, you can go to the GitHub because now it is open source. And if you want to get the pure uh, Stanford parser output, then you need to unactivate the, the Atenor rules and you will get the, uh, the uh, Stanford parser output for your file. And so here, this is the output for, um, uh, for the three sentences. So we will go through this, we will see. So here is the sentence, here is the sentence again, and we'll, we'll go through this file, and I will explain to you what these annotations mean. So this, what you see here, is purely the Stanford parser output but it is transformed into another format so that we can read it better. Yes. So we'll go through the output format one by, uh, line by line or type of line, per li uh, type of line. So first of all, the always each line, each line is a dependency. Is like, it's, it's not, uh, necessarily a syntactic dependency, but it has the form of a dependency. And a de so a de dependency, you first have uh, the dependency itself. I, I've lost my, my, my uh, yes, yes. You first you have the dependency itself. Then the dependency may have features and values. It is not obligatory. And then uh, for example, in here, in this first uh, example, we don't have, so this is the dependency, and it doesn't have any features, it is uh, optional. And then, so a dependency has arguments, it can have one or two arguments. And the arguments can, oh, uh, oh, I, I made a mistake, it's not the arguments that can have a value, it is all, only the features, I, I didn't try to write. I, I will um, uh, correct this. So the arguments can have features and the features again can have values. So this is the overall, it, it is very simple. It is every line 
uh, every line of uh, Atenor, I think, it is of this format. So, Agnes, the, can I just ask yes? a question? So, the, yes. um, when you're defining these dependencies, are they over just a sentence? Like that seems to be the case. So, if you're looking for the relationships between um, the different features, it's it, like the window probably stops at the end of the sentence, or does it go for further? Uh, it's it's only the sentence. Right. So because the Stanford parser has already segmented yep. um, the text into sentences. Yep. Actually, the Stanford parser does go a little bit further because it does some. Um, um, what is um, uh, well, when you have a I I, <laughs> I have lost the word. Um, uh, when you have um, a pronoun, for example, and you know what the uh, what it refers to in another sentence, okay, we so don't use this feature. Okay. Uh, I, I, so, um, pardon? Oh no, it's uh, co-reference. Sorry, co-reference. It does co-reference. Okay. I yeah. think, but we don't use co-reference. So here, our, the, our our unit of analysis is the sentence. Right. At this point, and it, but we we get on. Oh, sorry. So so it would find the features um, anywhere in the sentence if there was a relationship. Like it's not restricted to a smaller window at all for those dependencies. What do you mean by smaller window? Pardon? Um, oh, I was just so some of the ones I've seen you define maybe a three or four word window in terms of the co-occurrence. There's nothing like. Ah. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Maybe it, it wasn't clear. So what happens is that the text is, is segmented into sentences. And from now on, we are analyzing the sentence. There is no such uh, uh, concept as window here. Right. Yeah. We have the whole sentence. And in the sentence, the goal is to find the relationships between the words. But this, uh, the Stanford parser does it... Um, on a statistical basis, so they they uh, uh, trained it with hand uh, analyzed texts a lot, and and uh, and it analyzes the um, so it, it will give out the syntactic relationships uh, within the sentence. There there are, there are no windows. There is the sentence, and you get the the syntactic relationships dependencies between the words in the sentence. Cool. Okay. Is, is that clear? Yeah, that's perfect. Um, oh, good. Yeah. Thing again, related to this uh, syntactic dependency. So, yeah. Um, I'm not still uh, very clear on what exactly is that. Um, is it just the existence of words in a sentence? If it's if it's not looking for co-occurrence of words in a window. Well, we we what 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 we are going through now is an incremental analysis. Mm -hmm. So the first analysis is, so we, we, are, we are going step by step, and this is how uh, the analysis is going as well. It, 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 it does first, the first thing is to do is to analyze what are the syntactic dependencies because the co we, we can see if there is a co-occurrence. Uh, uh, so to see if there is a pattern that involves co-occurring um, uh, concepts, we can only know it if we have the syntactic analysis done. I, I'm, I'm not sure that this was your question. Um, so, so what exactly is that syntactic analysis that Stanford okay. is doing? I, I will show examples. So I will show you examples what they are. I, 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 so it, it is maybe the next line. We we'll oh, see, okay. not, not the next, but after that. Yeah, yeah, okay. So if we go on this, go through this slide and you don't understand it, then let me know. Okay. Right? Because we are going to, to uh, I, I, I hope you understand from this what a syntactic dependency is, right? Okay. okay. So now what, what I'm explaining now is what, how to read the output of the uh, of, of Atener because this is the output that we if if you want to uh, do any changes in the grammar this is what you will see and this is the basis we uh, so on the basis of this you will do your 
your uh, modifications. So, and, and what I said was that this, um, the output, the lines of the output are a dependency, which can have features and values, and arguments, which can have features and values. And the first line that you see is um, this, the, the, the sentence, the sentence represented as a dependency again. And this is the root, means that it is the upper level of the analysis. It is one um, uh, depend, like, like one dependency, and the argument of this dependency is called root again, and its feature is the sentence itself. But this is not very important for you. What is important for you is to see that this is your input sentence. And this is important as well because this uh, d-root dependency will get the feature of the which will be the, uh, the rhetorical type of the sentence. But again, we are going to see this. Now, what else you see in the output? You also see one line for each what we co call token of the sentence. A token is the word type. So in the sentence, you had the, the sentences, these insights provide direct evidence, etc. One of the tokens is insights. Ins insight is the token, is, 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 no, it is the word occurrence, is the occurrence of the word in the sentence, is the, uh, how the word, uh, in what form this word occurs in the sentence and it is insight. And then we are going to go through this line, what everything means in this line. So uh, the tokens are uh, represented in the output by the dependency that is called sin. And uh, so you see that the name of the dependency is sin and its uh, argument is the token insights. So what, it, what does it mean? So here, you have, <clears throat> I mean, it, its argument is, I, I, I did say it well, the argument is uh, the part of speech NNS, which has the value insights. But again, this is not very important. The important thing for you to know is that this is the insights token, which has the part of speech um, NNS, which means a plural noun in the Stanford parser. So this is uh, Stanford parser. This is always the the um, the argument is always at a Stanford parser um, uh, label, uh, part of speech label. And here you 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 also have attached the list of Stanford parser part of speech tags. So you see that NN is noun, NNS is plural noun, and then P is proper noun, etc. Uh, RB is a verb, verb, and the different verb parts. So, um, but in Atenor also have other kinds of part of speech tags, which come, uh, which, which, we, which we use, uh, like noun, plural, and noun. Um, uh, so these, these are a little bit different. I mean, these are the different, the same part of speech tags, but uh, but may but uh, represented differently, so that it can be more modular. Modular, and you can use these features, these noun, plural noun, uh, etc. All these features in the grammar. We'll see the we we'll see uh, the importance of this because sometimes we want to write a rule where plural is an important uh, ingredient and uh, with the text of the Stanford parser we are not able to express it we, we would need to uh, list all the plural elements for example nns or, or a plural verb or etc and the, uh, by using the um, these other uh, types of tags uh, it, 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 it can be useful. Maybe you don't understand it now, but the, the important thing for, for now to know that there are two types of part of speech tags, but 
they, they mean the same, but they are just different representations. You have the, the Stanford ones and the Ettinger ones. And um, then here you have, so the, the value of this uh, uh, noun feature is in sites, which is, uh, a, which is a token, which uh, meaning a surface form, that is the form of this word as it occurs in that sentence. Uh, there are some other uh, features coming from Ettinger. For example, the feature last, it is an Ettinger feature. Uh, I'm not going to go in it now because I don't think it is very important or maybe, I, I don't remember if, anyway, I can, I, can, I can explain it. So the last feature means that this word, this uh, word insight is the last in, the, in, a, in a group in the sentence. For example, here you have a noun phrase in the sentence, which is these new insights. And in this group, these new insights, insights is the last word. This is what it means. We might need this feature in the rules. Then uh, one of the features is lemma, uh, it, which is the vocabulary form of the word insights, which is insight. It is the, 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 the dictionary form. It is the base form of the word. And this is very, very important because when we assign the concept features or other features to words, it is to this dictionary form that we assign the features. And this means that, um, so if you, uh, that, that the, um, the feature will apply to the word in every uh, form of this word, in sight or in sights, or in the case of verbs, the present, the past, and all, all, all the forms. And we will go, uh, we will see it again when we speak of the, of the and, and the importance of this when we go to the, to, to the lexicon. Then um, this is, um, this is again a, a Stanford parser um, feature named entity. So it, it just says uh, the value is either yes or no, either it, it has a name. And so this, this token, is it a named entity or not? If it was, for example, uh, a UTS, UTS would be named entity one because it is a named entity. It is a pro proper noun, in other words. And then uh, the ID is the, um, the identity, uh, uh, is the word ID in the sentence. So this is the th third word in the sentence. And then there is uh, one other feature, the speaker. I don't really know what it is. Uh, we, we, we are not going to use this feature. So these are the, these, these are the types of features that are assigned to each word in the sentence. And this is represented by the sin dependency in Atenor. So what is important is that you have the part of speech info information, which is very important, which you have in two formats. You can use uh, any of the formats in, in the rules, either the, the, the Stanford or the Atenor part of speeches. You, you, we will see how and why, and uh, that's all. For this kind of line, sin. And then you have the syntactic dependencies. And the syntactic dependencies are like here, if we, we have new insights, which is a syntactic dependency called a mod, which is a um, adjective modifier. And here you also have, ah, what happened? What happened? I, I, I maybe, uh... yes. So uh, here is the list of all the Stanford Parser syntactic dependencies uh, with their meaning. There are, uh, for example, uh, auxiliary case, copula. Uh, these are not the uh, determiner, for example, the house uh, determiner dependency and um, uh, subject. 
uh, object, direct object, indirect object, etc. So you can object, you, you, you can look up the meaning of these dependencies. But um, for the time being, what is interesting for us is just the existence of this syntactic dependency. And so um, the, um, in, in Atenor, the, uh, the arguments of this syntactic dependency are the parts of speeches and their features are the words itself. And you can see the word and the slash the lemma. So you see the syntactic dependency, adjective modifier of between new and insights, new insights like as words, uh, tokens, and also the lemmas, which, which are um, uh, denoted by slash. But in, the ca in, 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 in case the lemma is the same uh, as the word form, there is no slash. So insights new. So these are the, the syntactic dependencies. Now, here we see for these three sentences, uh, the, the, the Stanford parser output and what the Atenor, uh, what Atenor adds to this uh, um, uh, input uh, after the concept matching rules of novelty, new idea. Uh, so novelty is, is, um, is the pattern of new and idea. And idea has two subclasses, mental and scope. And here you can see, so here the first sentence is these new insights provide direct evidence. Here is the sentence without any tag. And here it is tagged as impsent in, in, in Atenor, it, it is important sentence. So it is all the sentences that are tagged will get the dependency name impsent and which will have um, features and the features of the sentences are the, um, um, the rhetorically salient sentence types. So nofstat, I called it, but you can, you can map it into the words that are used in, 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 in Ewa. It is the novelty, it is novelty. So here you see that the sentence after the, uh, after the rules in the output, you have, um, you see that this sentence is novel. All the three sentences are novelty. The third sentence is also summary. It, a contribution is summary and any author means that, uh, but we will we, we see uh, these tags again. It means that um, actually the parser doesn't know if this is a summary of the author's uh, own writing or it is the summary of somebody else's writing. Because these results, uh, when you see these results, you don't know if these refers to the, to, to the article, uh, to the, the current article or to the work of somebody else. And then uh, I gave the tag any author. We don't know who, who what, what, what is summarized. So, so here, at the beginning of the sentence, you can see uh, the tags um, of the sentence types and in the dependencies. So here, you see the relevant dependencies. By relevant, I mean the dependencies where the pattern is instantiated. So here in the first sentence, new insights provide evidence. We see that the, the, the Stanford parser has found uh, syntactic dependencies between provide and inside because insights provide and you see that insights is the subject of provide and this is the subject dependency then uh, new insights there is this uh, adjective modifier dependency and between provide and evidence there is a direct object dependency so here on the left, you see the raw output of the Stanford parser. And these are the three dependencies. 
that need to be detected by the Ateneur rules and be tagged as important dependencies for the, uh, uh, for the label. And here on the right, you see that these dependencies have been rewritten as I call them, uh, why, why can't, uh, I, don't, I don't remember, key, key sentence word, I think, I, KSW, they are all historical names. So key sentence word dependencies, meaning that it is the important dependency, which has the features no novelty, like new, and scope, the insight has the, um, uh, the feature scope, which I, I, I'm going to, uh, um, uh, to exp well, to describe what scope is. Scope is, is sc the scope feature is a subclass of the idea feature. It, uh, it, 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 it is words about the products of mental operations, like insight. And uh, so if you have two words in a sentence that have, um, uh, that have uh, concept features, then the dependency will be tagged with these concept features, and it will be called um, a key sentence word dependency, an important dependency. So in, in, in the case of these three dependencies, in all, the th in all the three, these are important dependencies because they contain two words which have uh, the constituent concepts. And then the rules say that if you have this constellation of constituent concepts in the sentence, then call, tag this sentence novelty. So here you see the input on the left, and the output in the right after the rules. Okay, so if this is clear, Shibani, is, is it clear now? Uh, yep. Yes, yes? Yeah. So you, you, you see what a syntactic dependency is? Yep, yep, we get it. Yes, now. okay, yep. good. Yeah, yes, so, so this is very important to understand uh, what I've said until now, because this is really the basis. And if this is clear, then we can go further and see, um, ah, yes, yes. Then you can do an exercise if you want, if you, if you are interested. So here is an exercise that you can do after the course. So you, you can create a file of the three same sentences, and then you run the Stanford parser on this sentence. And uh, so first run the Stanford parser and then comment the lexicon and dependency rules in the file, analyze Anna Kif by writing these two slashes at the beginning of the line. But be careful uh, because there are already slashes uh, so you, uh, when you unslash it, so you, you should know which ones uh, have already been slashed, which uh, commented out. So that if you, <laughs> when, when you put back the original, um, the original uh, uh, status, uh, then you don't unslash files that are not important. So you, uh, you comment, all the rules and the lexicons for the, um, uh, for the concept matching grammar, and then run, uh, analyze Anakif on, on the Stanford parser output, on, on the XML output of the Stanford parser. So you run um, uh, AWA on it, and you can uh, observe the dependencies. Uh, and then if you rename uh, sent, uh, the result, you, you give it another name, and then you uncomment the lexicon uh, uh, and the dependency rules in analyze Anakif, then, and, and you run uh, Atenor again, and then you can compare the two results. So this is a good exercise for you to do. 
the same thing that I, 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 I showed here. So you will see uh, side by side the original Atenor, uh, Stanford output and the Atenor output. And you can see what the difference is between the two. So this exercise is just for you to, to, to practice what's going on here. And Agnes, we, this is where we would use those, those terminal tools you put in the folder for us. Yes, you would use the terminal tools when you want to edit any of the grammar files. If, if, uh, you, you would use the, the tool when you open uh, the file Analyze Anakif. This is the configuration file where you have all the files that are run, that are used for Atenor analysis. And to comment them, you can do it in these tools. But you can use any other editor as well. You are not obliged to use those. But if you use another editor, be sure that it is a very simple one so that it, does, it, it is notepad or if it, something that doesn't do any formatting or anything because that can be dangerous. I don't know, I have never used anything else. I myself, I, I don't use these editors, but they are really practical because they, they help you with formatting the rules. And uh, I, I myself, I use Emacs, but I, I, I work in Linux. Yes. So if you, if you feel like doing it, it's, I, I think it's very useful because you can see yourself, but you can also go through this uh, slide and see uh, what it is. But if, if, if you do the exercise, then you practice a little bit uh, uh, at a very, a very easy manipula manipulation of the tools. So uh, now we have finished with the Stanford parser output. If you want a little break, we can have if you like before we go to the second part, but I can go on. Okay, I go on. Um, so the grammar configuration, it means that you gather all the files that you're going to need for the grammar. And the grammar uh, configuration file is this um, uh, analyze ana kif? It means analyze ana analytical, and kif is the extension of the of the file name. So, in order to open it in the console, it, it's we call it console. Um, uh, here is the um, you 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 can call the console with this command if you like. And um, so this, this actually, this screenshot is the console itself. So it is good because it, have, it has these different colors. So you see what is what. And um, here, so you see there are some lines that are commented already. And uh, you must be careful if you command these uh, active lines that if you when you uncomment them, don't un uncomment those that are already commented. But you, you can also uh, erase these files. These are not important, except the first, 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 loading a dependency file is important, loading a lexicon file and loading features because this, these comments show you the, um, uh, the structure, structuring of the files which is important because you might add new files and it's important for, for, for this to, uh, to be modular, I think, if you have different systems and, or different domains, for example. So this is the configuration file where you have, these are, these, the dependency files, are the files where, well, we, we, we'll go through these again and, and, and uh, we we'll see what the function of each type of file is. Except we, I, I, I don't have a file about the features. I have forgot about it. Uh, yeah, may, maybe I have something we'll see. So uh, as I said, you can add as many files as you like and it's better to keep it modular. But 
um, the one uh, one thing I, I I forgot. I will add it again. So I will uh, I will um, upload a new version of this after I, I, I add the changes that I, uh, I think of now, uh, that um, the order is very important. Because it is an incremental system, so the rules will be exec executed one after the other. So the first, we have the new dependencies, then the add feature, and then the other add feature and the dependency. And if you add a new file, you need to be very careful where you put that new, new file. OK. Now, uh, we'll go uh, through the lexicon files and the dependency files, and we'll see the format of, 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 of the rules that we write and, and the role of these files. So the role of the lexicons is to add features to lemmas or to particular forms or uses of lemmas. So what does that mean? That add features means you, the features are usually the, uh, um, the features that you add are uh, the, con uh, the, the, the concepts. Like here you have the lemma address and you add the features mental we i added the feature uh, this uh, key sentence word to every every cons uh, every cons not every almost to every uh, constituent concept and there are some other features here which um, which we'll speak about later but here in the lexicon file, you add a feature to a lemma. But you may have a restriction on the lemma. So here I say that add these features to this lemma only when it is a verb. If it is not a verb, don't, because we don't want uh, he came to uh, my address we don't want it to be a mental word. We, it, it is not part of any pattern that we want to detect. It is only when it is a verb. And we signal this by giving a feature, a restriction to the lemma address. And, and this will match address, addressing, addressed the past, but uh, it will not match the word when in the sentence, it is a noun. And the Stanford puzzle knows if it is a noun or it is a ver verb. We'll see an example of this. So again, the lemma is the dictionary form of a verb. And so the features will be assigned to any form of the word, like addresses, address, or addressing. And then here, the feature is a constraint. Again, it is optional, of course. You don't put this uh, a constraint to every lemma. And so the tag is only assigned to the lemma if the text, if in the text it's analysis uh, part of, or it's not necessarily a part of speech, we'll see it again. It, it matches this or does not match this. So you can also say when it is not a noun, you could also say that. Give uh, uh, address these features when it is not a noun. But in this case, it was easier to say when it is a verb. And then here, these added features are uh, the, con the constituent concepts or other features that we assign to these, um, uh, to the lemmas. So here, this means. Uh, uh, equals plus means that you assign this feature. And the, the colon plus means that it does have the feature. And it is always the same in all the, all the types of rules. Now, uh, so here is the beginning of the current uh, lexical ana o text file. It is a text file. So the lexicon file is a text file. 
and here it is in the in in the user interface what it looks like this uh, this file and so you see there are some duplicates in this file but this is because i'm i i i generated this ethanol format automatically from the previous format so uh, it is it is it is not completely clean but it doesn't matter so it doesn't matter if you have uh, uh, two lines for one word uh, or anything or even if you have the same line twice it it it, it, it also uh, happens because it is because of historical reasons and uh, it, it doesn't matter but if you like you can clean it up as well uh, for visibility reasons and uh, also you need to know that there are some features that were used in other systems for other purposes which were left in but this doesn't matter as well i mean this this all can be cleaned up it is not really clean it it, it is the result of 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 quite a hasty work that I did on on uh, transforming uh, the uh, the previous grammars to this format, so I didn't go into cleaning it up. And uh, here I asked Claude why concept is in blue, and he said because it is a keyword in uh, in the program. So it, this doesn't matter at all either. So this is uh, what uh, lexicon, the lexicons look like. And so a very important point is that uh, it's not, we cannot know in advance what lemma the, the Stanford parser assigns to a word form. So, uh, so there is a word form and the lemma is an interpretation of the Stanford parser of this word. And we don't know, there is not a list of these, because, because the interpretation uh, uh, depends on the sentence itself. We don't know if, for example, if we have the form accumulating, if the lemma will be accumulate or, or uh, uh, so here, okay, here we have, we are accumulating and the lemma will be accumulate and accumulating accumulate accumulated accumulate but we have the word and here again for accumulated we have accumulate but uh, in another case we have opening the opening hours and the lemma will be opening and not open it could have been open or these are shared resources. Shared is analyzed by the Stanford parser as an adjective. Shared, and it's not analyzed as the past perfect form of share. But it, 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 it could be the case. We don't know. Um, for example, here you see they accumulated evidence. Clearly, accumulated is a verb, and the lemma is accumulate. And this is accumulated evidence. It could be analyzed as an ad adjective, but it is analyzed as a verb by the Stanford parser. So by precaution, uh, it's better to, uh, to, to, to list in the lexicon, if you have a new word, if you want to add a new word, all its forms as a lemma, because we don't know what it will be. Is this clear? We don't know if it will be accumulate, accumulated, or accumulating. Because it's it's not it's not uh, it 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 it, uh, it is not systematic, and the analyses are not uh, uh, maybe ambiguous, maybe not so so straightforward to see what the lemma is. But again, this is not something that I did systematically myself. Yes, uh, Simon, you want to ask something? No. No, that's fine. I was just going. Okay. Yeah, that's clear. Ah, okay, 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 great. Stanford uh, is not pardon? perfect. The Stanford parser is not perfect. It's not that it's not perfect. It's 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 not that. It, it, so these are difficult. Uh, these are diff difficult choices. 
and maybe it depends on so if if you uh, we we had very very uh, long discussions about it when we built Xin. Well, how should we uh, analyze something as a noun or a verb or which what what should be the lemma? These are really grammar is really 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 fuzzy. The 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 uh, the concepts are not very very clear. So it's not it's not they, these are not easy. These are not so nothing nothing you 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 cannot say that. Uh, uh, it's an error. It is. It is just you have to know that sometimes it is like this, and so you're right. It is not perfect because it is not systematic. But even for humans, it's very difficult to be systematic in this case. So to illustrate how we use the constraints on the part of speech. So here you you see that address uh, gets these features only when it is a verb. So here you have the sentence, they address the problem. Here, address is a verb. And you have another sentence, the address of the problem is this. Maybe uh, <laughs> I wrote this sentence to show that address can be a noun. And you see in, in, um, in the first sentence, um, this is a contrast. The address, they address the problem because you have address and problem in a syntactic dependency and uh, the uh, the feature mental has been assigned to address because it is a verb so here you can see why i use this part of speech the 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 atonor part of speech instead of the uh, of the stanford parts of speech because here you see the stanford uh, part of speech tag, which is VBP, which is the past verb past. They have a tag for each form of the verb, whereas in Atener, you can have a general verb tag and it will match every um, form of the verb. It will match the past, the present, the uh, every, every every form, right? The second person, the uh, I mean the third person, the others. Whereas in the Stanford puzzle, they have a tag for each. And if if I use that, then I would need to uh, to list here all the Stanford puzzle tags as a constraint. Whereas now I just have this umbrella verb tag as a constraint. So this is also a verb because you see the in, 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 in the sin dependency, you see that it is a verb and it is a key, a key search verb and it has the uh, a key sentence verb and it has the features, this no and public and mental. And this is why uh, this sentence is an important sentence. But in this sentence, the address of the problem is this address has been um, uh, analyzed as a noun correctly. So the noun doesn't have, has, hasn't got these features assigned. And here we can see a, a rule where the constraint on number is important. So here you see also the modularity of our tags. You can only say you want something, you want to give a tag to a verb, word when it is not plural, and when it is plural, so here you see the word article, and it is a noun, so it, it shouldn't be a verb. So when it is not a plural noun, in this article, for example, it will get the feature public because it will be related to public to the publication of the current article. But when it is in plural, it will be a more general meeting. The articles, right? It will be more uh associated for example with background sentences etc it, it 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 will not be associated with summary sentences because in a summary sentence i speak about my article in this article i uh, i uh, describe for example and in this case it will get one uh, the the uh, the feature publication and 
in their articles the authors describe, it will get another tag because it will be associated with another type of sentence. So here we have two sentences. In this article, we show a case. And the other sentence, in previous articles, we showed the case. The first sentence is a summary sentence because in this article we show, and here you see it, the article is singular, singular, so it gets the pub uh, tag. And in the other sentence, the old temp stat, it means the background, it is the background. Um, and here you have uh, articles in the plural, and it gets the scope tag. So this was to show the importance importance of the constraints on the lemmas in the lexicons and how it affects the analysis. So usually when you add a new word, what you should, uh, maybe I, I no, uh, uh, yes, I, 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 I will say it. So here you have a table of the constituent concepts uh, ethical features. So the, the, the features that are um, um, assigned to words in the lexicon, in the lexicon file, these features can also be assigned in other files. I will show it when, be, so because when you, when you assign a feature to a word in a lexicon file, then it means that this uh, assignment is context-free. This word will get these features, feature or features in any contexts. But sometimes you want to constrain the context. For example, when you have um, the word draw, in the context we draw on uh, somebody else's work, you only want to give a concept, assign a, um, a constituent concept to the word draw only if it is followed by on, you draw on. You don't want to assign it in a case where I drew a, I don't know, I drew a pencil out of the box. And, but you cannot give this feature to draw in the lexicon file because then it would match all the occurrences of draw. So we'll see how to do that in the dependency files. Now here, in, so in this table, there are all the constituent concepts. I mean, yeah, all the, all the major constituent concepts that are used in the analytical grammar. Here you have their um, explanations. And also uh, on the right, uh, the rhetorically salient sentence types which we, which, with which they are most associated, in which they appear, where they appear in the rules. So the first is attitude, importance, and surprise. These are concepts that are put together because they are all related to sentiment and evaluation. They have slightly different semantics. Here, there are some examples of words from the lexicon, uh, which uh, this, this um, uh, concepts are uh, assigned to and the sentence types where they appear. And then the contrast, the contrast has two subclasses. Uh, I mean, these are not subclasses, these are um, uh, subcategories. There are functional words or function words and there is a subclass for words like however. They, they do have an importance in the rules. And then uh, deictic is related to the context of the text. For example, above, current, following here, this we. Inc is the related to growth, increasing, accumulate, emerge, mounting, trend. So what, what, what is also important is that these words can be any part of speech, any kinds of word, words, which have a, a component of their meaning that is important for us. For example, in the deictic, you see above and following and here are very, very different words, but they can all um, 
point to the current work. In, 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 the, um, in uh, the table above, we write, or in the chapter above, or in the following part we'll describe, or here we, uh, uh, here we uh, speak about, etc. Now, the time, well, what, 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 what I call the time fact, uh, is anything related to time, which has two subclasses, the new and the old. And for example, existing or recent, traditional, widespread, they all uh, belong to the general temporal factor when, when um, some idea is, is um, related to, to some time span. And then in the new, we have improve, new, innovative, unravel, for example, because it is also something with novelty. Uh, you, you see there, uh, you, you, know, you need to have one ingredient of the word that, um, that is related to the concept. And in old, we have earlier, generally, recent, traditional, which refer to past time. Then uh, the mental uh, category is a very, very wide one, and it is the most important one because in the, in, 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 in the center of the whole system is the mental uh, operations that, we, uh, that, that, that are important in, in analytical and argumentative work. So, uh, for example, accept or analysis or argue, clear, something is clear, dismiss, clear mentally, imply. Uh, and it has some, so this category has, has the, uh, the subcategory, which uh, I call know, which is related to knowledge, uh, what we know, clarify, recognize, study, unclear, well known. So these, uh, so, uh, uh, these words get both the tags, the, the categories mental and no. And we know, no, we use this no category in the question, because uh, question, uh, open question uh, type. Uh, it is not known up to now, or, or uh, it hasn't been studied, or it is unclear. It, it is related to this open question tag. And then the pub is everything related to publication, which will be associated with the summary, like address, documentation, discuss, and paper. And then uh, the scope, it is related to research output, but mental and scope are very, very, very close. And, and I also created a tag meant scope for in, 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 in uh, rules where it is, uh, it is indifferent whether it is mental and scope. Uh, academic category finding, finding only when it is a, is a ver uh, noun, of course, a new finding, uh, review or topic. And there is also a category wide scope, uh, which, which, uh, which uh, denotes uh, uh, large scale research output like a very general research output, like approach, dogma, idea, theory, and view, because these, so these, uh, these um, uh, concepts and sub-concepts are importance, uh, are, have some importance for uh, the patterns. It is maybe not very straightforward to see why exactly these categories are here, but I think when we go through the rules, and the system itself, it will become clearer. Agnes, yes, um, yes. Novelty should, mm -hmm. is that is that missing from the from the right hand column? Should that be under background? Uh, exactly. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and novelty and, to add. And yes, we had, exactly. We, we had a discussion by email recently about um, position. Because uh, oh, yes. I, I emailed you saying mm, we don't seem to see position coming up very often. Um, no, and it, it was to do with a stance, and we had been we had been misinterpreting that as perhaps um, that the author was discussing adopting a position or, or discussing a perspective. Yeah. I think yeah. yeah, 
Uh, and this is in fact very close to surprise. Uh, it, it is that the author is expressing um, an attitude to yeah. something. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, all this is attitude, but I think, for example, this per perspective thing, the way you understood it would be very important. So this can be, for example, a case for creating a new class, a new tag, a new, new uh, sentence type, if we can find a good pattern, if we, if we can um, uh, define a new, a new uh, sentence type. It could be very interesting. Right, because um, one of the things that So the I... kind of sentence that hmm. you put... So the kind of sentence that my position is this and that. So yes, or for I... the time being, this is not a, a sentence type that we tag. Right. But if uh, we think that this is important and if there are different ways of saying it, so it, it, is, it, is, uh, uh, it is material to further research yeah. for this. Because it, one of the things that we, are, that we do as academics and one of the things we try and get students to do is to explicitly adopt different perspectives. Yeah. Right. So we would say, according to this theory, or yes. fo following, following this argument, or from this perspective, or, uh, you know, uh, um, so you, you are essentially adopting different epistemic lenses onto, exactly. onto a problem. And it's... That would be a very nice move to detect, because this would be. An, I agree. I agree. I agree. Well, this would be at a different level, though. But this is this is really very interesting. I think it is also in relation to um, to Sway's moves, uh, because uh, I think there is a move that uh, that says. Uh, uh, it's not evident. It 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 it, it, it is something related to, to relating. Um, I I don't remember exactly. But but um, so relating your work to somebody else's work, or uh, no, it is not exactly that. I, I mean, anyway, I think it 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 would be a very it it would be interesting to um, to go go further into it and so. What I always say, by no means is this list exhaustive. The, these are the things that have come up up to now, but there is uh, the possibility of further developing the system and adding new moves, because these are not all the, <laughs> this is not an exhaustive list of the moves that appear in, uh, in yeah. argumentative writings. So, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So, so here are so these are the basic um, the basic uh, categories, and then there are some 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 other features as well. So there is one feature that is very important, which is, which is called weak. It is words with a very general meaning that add little to rhetorical meaning, but they do add something like different, discover, hope, must, rather, and think. So if, if, if there are, for example, there is a rule that says if in a sentence uh, there are two words in, in, uh, in, uh, in a syntactic relationship and both are weak and there are no other uh, important, um, important um, uh, dependencies, then don't tag this sentence. Because for example, uh, uh, we, dis uh, 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 we hope to discover, uh, uh, I don't know, a, a new plant maybe, so this is not a rhetorically important sentence. We, but, but if you say uh, a new theory was discovered, it is important because uh, theory is not weak. But we'll see it again in the, uh, in the, in the rules, how this uh, weak uh, label works. And then uh, there is a, a tag, for example, no not, which means that words that are not constituent concepts when they are, when they are negated, 
And uh, for example, unknown, when you say not unknown, it is not interesting, but unknown is very interesting or uh, change or contest or, so um, almost all the negative words. And then uh, there are some other <laughs> weirdly looking, can, can you, yes? I mean, words like contest, um, uh, uh, I don't understand why why that's an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're. I, I think you're right. We don't do contest. Mean, don't, don't contest this. Yeah. So uh, if you see uh, things like this, you can erase. <laughs> Just erase the tag. You're right. I think. Mm. Yeah, there are mistakes in this one as well. It is not. It is like uh, every product of. Uh, uh, of, 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 of NLP, it's not perfect. I, yeah, yeah, probably you're right. And, and uh, we should see examples. Right. And yeah. when, when you started yeah. talking about weak, I thought at first you were talking about hedges or qualifiers. No. No, that's different. No, Just no, hedges. no. It's, it's are, very, very different. Are, are very important features. Yeah. I mean, these, these, uh, this is words which are really different, uh, very general, and um, and and often occur in the se in, in in sentences like different. Different means uh, does does indicate a contrast, different from something, but it is very general, and we don't want it to uh, to be uh, tagged in any case. If it is, so, if you say. Uh, uh, um, Uh, let me see. It is rather different. You don't want to tag it. You 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 don't want to. Uh, but we rather we rather think. For example, we rather think. It can be important depending on the on on on, on what comes in the sentence. Yeah. But if you just say we rather think, it's not very important. So these words will only get. Be, we will only be marked if there are other things in the sentences that um, that uh, confirm that the sentence is uh, important. Okay. Uh, and then these weirdly looking things with with menscope or with neck, etc. So these are used for disambiguation of words that are only so. It means that these are constituent concepts only when they are syntactically related to specific constituent concepts. For example, and, and this is marked by the name. For example, with time, it will be a word that is only a constituent concept that when it is in relationship with time, not with any other constituent concept. And, but, but in order to enforce this tag, I needed to write rules. There are rules that say that whenever a word has this, uh, this tag, it shouldn't be considered as, as a keyword. But we we'll see also, we we'll see this when we go through uh, the existing, rule, uh, existing rules. And then there is um, a tag transparent which, uh, which is um, added to words that have very general meaning and may link to constituent concepts, like ability, that, like the theory's ability to show, for example. Then there are no direct links between ability and show, uh, uh, theory and show, and it is ability that links them. And there will be a rule that says that there, if there is a transparent word, then take into into account the indirect dependencies for the co-occurrence rules, not just the direct dependencies. So I, I so here these these two uh, slides are here for reference for you uh, when you look into the uh, the rules and look into the output, you can understand what the features mean. So and when you add a new word, then try to find a similar word and copy its features. This is the easiest way to go, go about it. But you need to be critical 
with the, the, the existing system because it may be that uh, a use of a word hasn't been taken into consideration. You might find, you might find a sentence where there is a problem, where um, a, prob uh, um, uh, a sentence shouldn't be tagged, and it is tagged because it has a feature. So, and then it, it is possible to write a rule to, to, to correct the features, to write, to add another rule, and um, it, 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 is, it is a very, um, so, so the system uh, has been evolving over time and uh, new rules have been added all the time, all the time. When I see a, see a mistake, I add a new rule. And if this is done collectively, I think it can be improved very much, but, but the improvement uh, or uh, the collaboration, if, 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 if people work on the same system, it should be managed because it's very important not to introduce uh, uh, inconsistencies into the system. But this is again something that we will have a closer look at, how to manage the changes, if you are interested. So this is about the lexicons. And if you're not too tired, we can continue. Ah, okay, again, <laughs> before the next part, there is an exercise again. So you, you can create, if you want to do it, of course, you can create an input file containing these two sentences. The current theory is insufficient and the current theory is faulty. You write these two sentences and you observe the differences. There will be a difference between the analyses, although there should not be, because they are the same type of sentence. They are both contrast sentences. And then you will need to add a new lexical entry so that the two, uh, to the lexicon, of a, a new lexical entry, entry with a special uh, tag, so that the two sentences have the same rhetorical tag. And so, so then you can test if uh, in the end you will get the same result for the two sentences. So this is a little exercise. It is quite straightforward, but it, 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 it helps you uh, practice uh, how to intervene in the lexicon file. So now, <laughs> uh, rule formalisms. So, this will be more complicated and more complex. Uh, well, let's start. So what is the role of the rules? It, uh, uh, the, the dependency rules actually. Uh, well, I call, when I say rules, I usually mean dependency rules, uh, although the lexicon uh, file is also a set of rules. But when I say rules, it will be dependency rules. So what can we do with dependency rules? We can create or delete dependencies. So we'll be able to create new dependencies um, if we have the possibility. It, it is not always possible, but uh, so there, there is one of the, the files in the configuration file is called new dependencies. It is dependencies that do not exist in the Stanford parser, and I create them. Uh, it is usually based on, on, um, on two existing dependencies, but we'll go through it again. So we can create and also delete dependencies, which we don't need. We can add features. So the most important work is around features because the constituent concepts are features and the sentence types are features. So we add constituent concepts to lexical entries in order to group multiple features as a single feature. So this is one function. For example, scope and mental is, are, are two different features, but in very many rules we need it together. So there is a feature meant scope. So we see, say that every word that has a feature mental and every word that has the feature scope has also the feature meant scope. So, and we write a rule for this. This is a kind of rule. Then 
we can add or delete features to or from lexical entries depending on their context because in the lexicon uh, files no context can be specified i forgot to to uh, close the <laughs> um, the parenthesis uh, so this is the example that I said with draw on. So when, when, when in the sentence you have a context to a, lex to a lexical item, then you write a dependency rule for this, uh, to, to handle this. I will show examples. And you can also add or delete features to or from dependencies. So these are the four rows of uh, the dependency rules and the form the format of these rules is very straightforward so you you have a, a, a condition if and you have a result this is the result so here the condition begins with an if with a capital if and it is between parentheses you see the beginning and the end and then the result is, is you, you, you assign something to something. So here you have, if you have a dependency which has a, or which you, you can specify it does or if it does not have a feature with two arguments, the arguments are variables. You don't need to say which, what arguments, what exactly they are. So number one and number two feature. If you have a dependency with the, the arguments number one and number two, which have a special feature, then add a special feature to the dependency. For example, if you have a dependency where, you, where the first, um, the first uh, argument has the feature time, and the second argument has the feature scope, then this dependency will have the feature time and scope, for example. So you need this, you need to add a feature to a dependency because it is this feature that will uh, help you to write the co-occurrence rules. If you have a dependency with these features and these features, then you have this tag. If you have a dependency with a contrast, and an idea and the time, then you have a contrast dependency, for example. If you have a, a, a sentence where you have a dependency uh, that has the features new and idea, then the sentence will be novelty. And then another, so this is, this is one form, but the other is the same. Uh, except, except that you, in this case, you uh, you uh, delete a feature from one of the arguments. So here, the con the condition is that you have, uh, if you have a dependency which may have a feature with these two arguments, then from the first argument you delete the you delete the feature. So in, in order to delete features, you always use the tilde. And to add a feature, there's it uh, uh, equal and uh, this this sign, and uh, to add a feature equal plus. So this is this is just the form of the rules, and very very important that the order of the rules count. Uh, the the order counts uh, the same way as the order of the files in the configuration file counts because the rules are executed one after the other so you must be very careful if you add a new rule at which point you add it so here it is the rule formalisms and then we will go through uh, all of these cases what what all of these um, functions of the rules mean so it uh, creating dependencies. Uh, here we have a sentence. These are critical themes and issues. Here, the Stanford parser 
outputs two dependencies, one conjunction dependency between themes and issues, and one modifier dependency between critical themes. But, we, but it, it is also important for us because we want, if we want to mark the, the important words in the sentence, that, that uh, critical also modifies issues. But there is not such a, a dependency in the Stanford parser because there is already the dependency between themes and issues and the dependency between critical themes. But we would like to create this dependency, so we do create it, a new A mod dependency. We say if in a sentence you have a, conj a conjunction dependency between one and two, the arguments one and two, like themes and issues, and there, the and, so it means that and, there is also a modifier dependency between one, that is a uh, theme, and three, critical of, of the uh, modifier dependency. So these are variables and these, these are numbers that you, you assign to them, a, a number, but the same number is always the same word. And in this case, so if you have these two things, then create a new dependency. I gave it the feature grammar and analytic grammar so that I know that this, this dependency was created by me, by the grammar, because you might make mistakes. And so uh, it might not be a very good rule. So you, you need to know that you have to come back to this rule and modify it if it is not a good rule. So you, I, 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 I uh, mark all the rules, all the new dependencies that I create with grana, uh, analytical grammar. And so I create a new dependency, uh, which will be between uh, critical and issues. It will also be an important dependency. Unfortunately, I... I, I, I didn't copy here the results, but you can <laughs> check all these yourself. So this is the way new dependencies are created. Then I also may want to delete dependencies. Uh, I don't want a conjunction dependency be uh, an important dependency. I don't want uh, themes and issues to be an important dependencies. Uh, but I, I, I have created this dependency before because the very first rule is that when you have two words which have the, the key sentence word tag, create an important dependency of it. This, because it is a very general rule, it covers everything, but I want to uh, limit this. I don't want themes and issues to be something important. What is important may be critical themes and critical issues, but uh, themes and issues is, is not important in itself. So uh, I write a rule that says that uh, uh, if, if I have a conjunction dependency and it is, uh, it, it, it is an important dependency, that is a key sentence word dependency, then um, uh, delete it. So the dependency that I want to uh, I want to uh, modify. I uh, mark uh, is to be marked with this uh, sign. I don't know what you call this sign. This, um, so this one. So this means that it is this dependency that you want to modify, and this means that you want to delete delete this dependency. Tilde. 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 Yeah. Uh, no, the tilde. Yes, but this one. I don't know what it is called. Oh, carrot? Uh, carrot? Okay. <laughs> so, so the carrot means, um, means uh, that this is, this is, this is, uh, w uh, this is the one that you uh, uh, modify. Sweet. And so you see the rules are regular expressions. 
are conjunctions of regular expressions. Uh, so ba basically, you have conjunctions. You also have uh, choices to make and and, and things like that. So this, um, but but I, I usually only use uh, I usually only use uh, conjunction. I don't use disjunction when there is a disjunction. I usually write two rules because sometimes it might be tricky. So so in most rules you only have conjunction. You could have other operations as well. So very important, which I didn't keep all the time, but I, I try to, um, to explain the rules. It's very important to see why the rule has been made for others also to see and for yourself as well, because you might uh, forget. And to add an example sentence to see why you, you, you made this, this rule. Yes. So how to create dependencies, how to delete dependencies. Then um, uh, adding features to lexical entries in order to group multiple features as a single feature. This is what I said. So if you have a sin, which means um, sin dependency, which is a, a word, essentially, if you have a word which has the mental, um, mental, uh, feature, then it should be Mensco. So here you see a different formalism, but you, you are not, not obliged to write. So the, uh, what you see here always, these are screenshots of the original files. And there are different ways of adding a feature. You can also use the, uh, the quotes, but it's not necessary. You, the, it's, 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 it's it's option. So you, you use either format you like. So here the format is that you have if uh, the condition, if you have a word that has the feature mental, then add. So this, this is a way of writing it. Then add to this word the mensco and the mensco pub. Uh, a feature as well, and this you have to write at the end. There is nothing else that that happens. There is another way of writing it. Uh, you you will see uh, in the files. I'm sorry that it is. There are two ways, but this is what Claude uh, said. And uh, at the beginning it was this, and then I, it changed to something else. But there are different ways of writing rules. So this is one way. And also, you 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 add the mensco and the mensco pub to um, to all the words that have the the feature scope. But pub, if if, uh, if a word only has pub, then you will only add mensco pub, but not mensco because it is also publication. Well, these this this is a way of grouping different um, features into one in case you use the, these features together in the rules often. So it, 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 it makes it easier to write the rules. Then uh, adding and deleting t, uh, features to and from lexical entries depending on their context. So this is the example that I said on draw. Here, draw on. The results suggest that the teachers drew on dominant discourses. So you want to find drew on discourses um, and so here you here what is the the parser output you have a noun modifier dependency between draw and discourses and um, you have a, a, a case dependency between, between discourses and on. So this is the output of the parser. And, and so you can formulate this rule as if you have a noun modifier on the first, whose first argument is the lemma draw. So you have to specify the word here. And this, uh, which is in a, which is um, 
whose other argument is discourses, another word, it can be anything, any word. And if you have a case dependency between this word, discourse, and the case uh, marker exactly is on, so you have draw on, then this word will be mental. It, it is a very, very, very specific rule for one word with one in one context. And this is the way you can mark uh, phrasal verbs, for example. But if there are many of these, then you can create a label for phrase, phrasal verb, and you can write a rule in which it is not the lemma draw uh, that will be uh, used, but it's, it's, it's feature that you give in the lexicon. So you can see if, if you have a draw on, or uh, if, 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 if you have a collection of such words, which only are mental ver uh, words when they have a specific uh, particle after them, then you can group them together under one feature and use this feature in the rule. Uh, I don't know if it is clear. But we'll see. I, I, I didn't have a, a collection well, build, of such words. Build on. Pardon? Build Pardon? on. Expand uh, on. For example, build on. Exactly, exactly. It, uh -huh. Yes, exactly. Exactly. But I, I, I do, so since, since I didn't have a lot of words like this, and, and this is something that can be developed very much by adding new vocabulary. And Another example is critical theory. So critical is a critical word because it's not always, uh, I mean, uh, no, 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 it's, I, I, I got it wrong. <laughs> so what I wanted to do here is that critical theory, in critical theory is, is, a, is a concept in itself. And critical should, so critical theory shouldn't be marked because it is a theory. It is a, it is a concept. So the way, to inactivate it is to say that when you have a modifier critical theory for the lemma critical and the lemma theory, then we uh, uh, get rid of all the, all, all, all the features that they have for the grammar. And then a last one is, uh, uh, for example, purpose. Um, uh, we, we don't want to tag purpose when it is a purpose, only when it is the purpose, the purpose of this work, for example. So we say that if it, is, if, if, uh, it has an indefinite article, indefinite is a feature of article, determiner, which is also, by the way, an etener feature. I don't know if the Stanford parser has this feature. So if, uh, if in this uh, determinal, determiner dependency, uh, the determiner is indefinite, then purpose should not be a publication word. It is only a publication word when it is the purpose of the article. A purpose is not. This is the rule. If you consider that this is not a go good rule, you can comment it. Then uh, adding deleting features to and from dependencies. So here, um, uh, uh, adding features, what is it? Ah, this is not a good, good example. I'm sorry. Here, here I delete. I delete the dependency altogether. I delete a dependency. Sorry, I will, I will make you a, a better example for this as well. Sorry. Uh, what number is this? I don't know. Um, I, I will give you an example for that. But anyway, uh, so this, this was the last kind of rule. I, I, will, I will write uh, an example for this. And finally, here is an exercise again, if you feel like doing it. So if you create an input file containing 
the, sen the following sentence. And I think this sentence was given by Shibani uh, because this sentence was not tagged, is not tagged actually. Part three will examine the role of video conferences, etc. This should be a summary sentence, and it is not a summary sentence. So just run Adenor on this sentence. It should be tagged a summary, but the current system does not detect it. So you should need the exercise consists in identifying the words that instantiate the constituent concepts of summary in the sentence, and then create a rule. The rule should be at the beginning of the add feature Anna Orkiv file uh, that adds the pub and and the key sentence word features to the lemma part because part has no feature, but it should only have a feature when it is followed by three, part three. So in case uh, it is in a dependency relationship with a number, and now you will need to find out how to designate number in Athenor. So you will have to write the rule that makes that part has the Pabla feature in case it is in a dependency relationship with a number, like three. It can be a number uh, written with letters or with numbers, any, any number. And in this case, if, if, if uh, a part is tagged as Pabla, then the sentence will be uh, tagged as, uh, 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 as summary because Part will examine the role. It is, um, it is, it, it, it matches a co-occurrence rule. So you can take the existing system as an as an infrastructure, if you want to modify it, and uh, and act according to this. So here you do have the rule, but a word is missing. But this word is a little bit com complicated because it needs a context in order to get a feature. So, <laughs> it is exactly the two hours and I have finished this part. <laughs> <laughs> well done, thank you, Agnes. Um, that's, that's, I found that really interesting just to see more detail of what's going on here. Yeah. Well, I hope if you have any questions just don't hesitate to ask me. I, I didn't think, I, I, I wouldn't have thought that I, I could go to the end of this today, but uh, this is great. So, yeah, uh, timing. Um, <laughs> with, with space for a couple of questions. I guess if we'd got into more discussion, then, then we would have filled up the time. Uh, yeah, yeah. So if you, if you need a discussion session or anything, then just let me know. And then we'll... Um, program the next session in a month. Have uh, Kirsty or Radhika got any um, any comments? I think I need to play with the um, exercises and make sure they make sense for me um, before I can be sure. But I, th I think I've, I've just been telling Shabani that she should run a um, LA PhD session where we get all the students to go through the exercises. <laughs> so I'm not sure if she's up for that or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But yeah, really yeah. It, it's only by it's only by actually trying to make some changes that that, yeah, that exactly yeah. that, that we'll figure this out. Yeah, so that yeah, we have more questions when we try to run exercises, and yeah, I I am sure I'm sure you will have a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, um, but um, we we really appreciate that the effort you've put into creating this, Agnes. That's fantastic. Oh, thank you very much. I, 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 it's a pleasure for me to do this. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's, it's interesting for me as well. I like to do it. <laughs> and I'm very glad if it, is, if, if it is useful to you, it's great. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to stop recording now. So thank you very much. Uh, and uh, so we look forward well, to the next one. Well, thank you for listening. And uh, well, we, we'll uh, take up next time.